Are you gonna sue Dog Pack? Well, <sighs> all these pending lawsuits are exhausting. I need a holiday. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Today we got a brand new video today. I don't know if you guys know who Oompaville is, but he just dropped an interview about a few hours ago. I dropped a mega interview with Mr. Beast. We got a few points, a few talking points. The big one is Dog Pack 404. Now I've been scrambling to get these points down and I pretty much simplified them into the major categories that I really wanted answers to, that we all really wanted answers to. Uh, Mr. Beast is probably going to sue Dog Pack 404. Dog Pack 404 has made the worst, most bad faith judgment in Mr. Beast. He really seems like he's the kind of guy that really just wants to be on the in and in he's gonna do whatever step on whoever and take whatever he needs to do and get wait that doesn't even make any sense i don't even know if i just made any sense there. he's gonna pretty much do what he's got to do to get the biscuit at the end of the day a real dog at the end of the day that dog ain't got no bite bro you ain't got no bite dog pack for for everything he's tried to get mr beast on has been uh, either debunked fabricated or just flat out not true at all we finally get an answer from Oopaville's video. Are you gonna sue Dog Pack? Well, you know, there's tons of examples of him intentionally manipulating things to not be true and posting online. Tons and tons and tons of that. Soggy has a, basically an hour and 27 minute video and an hour of it is just flat out proving manipulation and lies. and caused a lot of harm to my businesses. I mean, I've literally had people pull out millions of dollars and then tell me it was directly because of his video. Don't worry, I instantly was like, can you send that in writing? So, you know, if I win a case or anything, I can directly point damages, no reason why. And um, so, I mean, it's just unfortunate. Like, I don't want to be put in this situation, but probably gonna have to. I mean, it's just, it's just, I mean, what do you do if someone's just spreading misinformation about you and, you know, just causing harm to your business and like getting it to the point where you might have to potentially fire people because it's costing you so much revenue. It's like, it's not fair to the people in my companies. You know what I mean? It's just sad. You know, it's, it's an, un, it's not a thing I take joy in, but right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay. So yes, they're Plan not done drafting it up, but once they're done, more than likely, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, uh, every law firm I've talked to, they're like, this would be the easiest win they've ever seen in their life. I mean, it's like crazy. I, I had one tell me like, you could chop up all the evidence into like three, sue three separate times and win all three cases because you'd have enough for each. Like I, one person I was talking to, he's won like 67 out of his last 70 cases. And he's like, this would be the, literally the easiest case I've ever done. <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's because there's just so much blatant, you know, misinformation and lie spread. Like, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, just go watch Soggy's video. Go look at his Twitter where he's redacted multiple ones of it. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, the other thing that was really brought into question, which is everyone was talking about on Twitter. Why did it take Mr. Beast so long? Why did Mr. Beast wait so long to put this stuff out? What, what, what did you have going on, Jimmy? And while he was doing that, he was also uploading videos. So it was almost like he was uh, trying to escape the criticism if you will it was almost like he was trying to evade the bullets if you will and i i rumored and i, I theory crafted that there's probably a big law firm because the mr beast brand and mr beast company at the end of the day the business is going to do what the business is going to do to protect its image and monetary status right what i theory crafted is that the suit of legality was informing jimmy that he was not going to be uh, speaking on this matter, they're going to be continuing their investigation into the situation at hand. What's going to make the business look the best at the end of the day? What's going to be best for Jimmy at the end of the day? He's got legal representation for himself, legal representation for his team, legal represent. Oh my God, I can't even speak. Legal representation for the Mr. Beast brand and company in question, as well as maybe representation for former and current uh, employees of the brand. My theory crafting uh, ended up being correct at the end of the day. Like most things I know award myself this medal but yeah no that ended up being the case as things it's not really shocking that they had a team behind them most of these uh celebrities athletes companies brand deals they all have these kinds of representation they all do the same exact thing whenever they conclude their investigation they'll get the pr and hey here's what you're gonna do here's how we're gonna do this and here's what you're gonna say go with it tell the truth and uh part of that investigation is they recommended that i not talk about drama or really do anything online because it might per influence 
you know, witnesses or any people they might interview or ex-employees. So uh, it's a little unfortunate because I told them, okay, I, you know, I'll wait till the investigation is over. And I believe that was literally like a week before the dog pack video came out. Um, and then truthfully, just in transparency, I've never done one of these like big investigations before. And it, in my head, it was going to last like two or three weeks. It ended up taking a couple months, mm -hmm. apparently combing through all the documents and doing all the interviews and everything just took way longer than I thought because I've never had to bring in a top tier law firm and a former federal prosecutor and let them, you know, do this really big thing. Um, and so that kind of concluded a couple weeks ago when I put out the tweet of the follow up. Yeah. Like that was the day I got the conclusion of it. And I was like, okay, in transparency, I'll throw this out. So up until that point, it was, you know, I told Quinn Emanuel that, you know, to protect the integrity, I, would, I wouldn't do anything or engage any of this drama. And then after that, yeah, like you said, a lot of stuff had come out between when the investigation started and when it ended. And I was just kind of like, whoa, I don't really know how to like hit this stuff. And I, I, even, I made like a little response video, but it's just kind of not my style where I just kind of like put a lot of the information that I assume we're going to talk about here out. And it felt, it just felt weird. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, truthfully, I've never been in a, a situation where people have thrown this much stuff at me. And I definitely could have handled it better. Like I probably should have, like the second I could have talked, like, I don't remember the exact date, two or three weeks ago when we put that report out, probably should have done something like this right then. If I could go back in time, I would. Um, and yeah, that's kind of like the brain dump. And then here I am. Yeah, so I was gonna ask, uh, you answered it towards the end, but like, do you regret that obviously? Uh, yeah. Yeah, if I could go back in time, I would I would do what we're doing here because I, I assume this is like the correct format. It's going to be a little bit more free-flowing and natural, mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't have wasted so much time like trying to do a response. It's just not my thing. It's I like, I like so much better, or I'm assuming, I mean, we just started, but I think I'm going to like so much better being asked the questions mm -hmm. and answer it instead of just like sitting in a chair like this, answering it. Uh, it just, just feels a little more natural. Got you. Yeah, a couple major ones that I want to get through after this one. And it was a big rumor mill, and I don't think it was projected by Dogpack 404, much less inferred. If that is wrong, he did actually say this. What the, bro? Dogpack 404 is kind of the guy that I don't really pay attention to unless something big happens that I go investigate it and he just happens to be adjacent to it with this weird spinning narrative. The Rosanna Pacino and Dogpack 404 video though, that blew up. That one got crazy views. I had to watch it. So there we go. Uh, that's like my third or fourth time seeing the weird conspiracy theory crafting from Dogpack 404 to try and get it owned on Mr. Beast as a former or ex-employee, if you will. But the Mr. Beast child slave labor thing that everyone's been rumoring, oh, he's, he's, doing this that and the other thing he's he's taking advantage of children doing this it's it's so bad it's so bad that's why he has all these like this oh dude it's so crazy the mr beast chocolate and uh, merch all built in china and all this other kind of stuff. it's crazy so umpaville does ask jimmy about this and this is what he had to say the company that is the gold standard that has been living and breathing this for the last 15 years is tony's open chain or tony's chocolate have you heard of them yes yeah i mean phenomenal they are nuts about this stuff like they and they've done all the research they live and breathe it like on how to eliminate child labor how to you know best support the farmers how to everything you can think of which i'm about to go in depth on and so i was like hey i need to talk to these guys these guys know what they're doing um and so i spent a lot of time with them and we actually formed a joint partnership with uh where we searched through tony's open chain with feastables and tony's open chain when we we're moving over there um and this has been a thing well before the controversy, before anyone says, oh, it's only because of the controversy. It was a thing before the controversy. Um, and basically, 100% of Feastables Cocoa is fair trade certified, which is expensive. It's basically the most expensive certification you can have on it, which for most chocolate companies would be enough. You'd get your cocoa fair trade certified. And then like, do you even know what fair trade certified means? Mm -hmm. Okay, do you think your viewers know? No. So if, I, if, I, if someone was like, you're unethical, and I just said, my beans are fair trade certified, my chocolate. 99% of people would be like, okay, good enough. That makes sense. So like I could have just hid behind that, but I didn't think fair trade there's, you know, I don't think that's enough. And so, uh, not only are hundred percent of feastables beans, fair trade certified, but hundred percent of them, we also pay a living income reference price. I have, a, have I mentioned any of this to you before? No. Okay. So hundred, uh, living income reference price, which basically, which is, this is why it's hilarious how people are like <laughs> claiming we unethically source our cocoa. And I'm ready to lay this out because everyone who said I use slave labor and I don't care, I hope you delete your videos because you were literally spreading s severe disinformation. So um, for us, one of the main drivers of child labor and cocoa is poverty. Like they don't make enough money. So you can't, you can't just go to a farmer and say, don't use child labor because if they can't afford to pay a grown up, then you're telling them, hey, go starve. You know, they have to make money. So um, 
one of the ways you can uh, eliminate child labor is you have to pay a living income. So there's a thing called living income reference price where they look at, uh, and tell me if I need to dumb it down or whatever, I don't know, but uh, they look at <clears throat> inflation, the cost of bread, basically the cost of living in these areas in West Africa. And they say, hey, if a farmer sells you a metric ton of cocoa, they need to get paid blank to actually be able to live. If you're paying under that, it's just not reasonable for them to live, which then will mean for them to live, they're gonna have to use child labor. So 100% of our beans, we pay a living income reference price. So if a farmer theoretically sold us a metric ton of cocoa for, I'll make up a number, $800, um, and the living income reference price is 1,000, we'll go, hey, we actually wanna pay you $1,000 for that, a $200 premium uh, on top of it to make sure you make enough money to live off of. And that's what we do for all our beans, which is like crazy, you know what I mean? Um, and, but if we're doing this, you know, we don't want child labor on the farms. And so um, we, there's child labor mediation system and there's a lot of stuff. And this is where Tony's has been great to work with. You know, we have people who check in on the farms and, you know, interview the families, interview the kids. If there are cases, remediate it, follow up, make sure the case was remediated. Um, and it's about, uh, part of solving child labor is, uh, making sure the farmers make more money. So we also have coaches that will work with farms to, you know, on their theoretical hectare, see if there's any way they can educate them so they can get 10% more yield. So for the same farm, they can make 10% more money. Therefore, they're they're not as in poverty, so it's easier. You pretty much proved it. Now we got all this stuff. We got too many lawyers, too many eyes on too many hands in the pot to even start doing that. It's improbable. But I do bring up the, the thing that just because Jimmy says this is true doesn't mean it's actually true, but keep that in mind. Now, the other one that's near and dear to my heart is insider trading, right? That is a huge, huge thing that was coming up uh, specifically with the crypto and the stock market fluctuation, the food industry. Insider trading is something that almost every single elite does, every single political uh, elite does, every single Vanguard and BlackRock owner does. So I'm really well versed in this type of atmosphere, especially considering my stock portfolios on the rise. Thank you, Nancy Pelosi, by the way. I follow your stock ticket. It's very much public. Thank you very much. 92% green for the Q4. Thank you. Or going into Q4, excuse me. Thank you very much. But they do rumor that Mr. Beast and Mr. Beast and company have been insider trading. So let's see what Jimmy has to say about that. Thank you so much, Uberville. Coffee's video. Yeah, Coffee's video and the report. Well, so I'll start off with the report. I mean, most people probably haven't even read it, but that's what kind of spawned that whole thing was this. Did you see it? Like mm -hmm. the, Yeah, so the, the gist of this crypto report that was... <clears throat> One second, sorry. Not my... Um, the gist of this report was, uh, Jimmy is too stupid to like make this kind of money. Therefore it must be insider trading. This is his wallet. You know, uh, clearly there was insider trading cause he never would have been able to make this kind of money. Um, when in reality, which is what I told coffee in that statement we gave him, it was managed by a fund. So I wasn't the one managing the wallet. The, you know, I've, I've never had access to that wallet. I've never done the buying and selling on that wallet. There's a uh, actual professional who's written books on crypto and lived and briefs crypto every second of the day managing it. So most of the allegations there like are just answered by like, I am too stupid to do that. That's why a fund was managing it. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, I mean, like Coffee said, like if you, he, he literally said this in a video, if you like Jimmy, then you're like, yeah, he has answers for everything and uh, just checks out. And if you don't like Jimmy, then you're gonna go, um, you know, it, there's obviously wrongdoing here. Um, but yeah, I mean, the honest truth is like, I make videos, I'm running seven businesses. I got a lot going on and, um, yeah, I invested in a crypto fund. They invested on my behalf and I've never like had access to that wallet. They're the one doing the buying and selling. I mean, there are thousands of transactions on there. Like I don't even have that kind of time. I'm sure you could probably even look at it and see like days where I was like maybe in solitary confinement or like doing a video where I didn't even have access to a computer and there's trading. True. So for like, for the conspiracy theorists that think I'm lying and using the fund as a cover up, like. I mean, there's got to be some way where you could just figure that out, like where I was on a plane ride or something. Um, but yeah, um, that's like the honest transparency is, you know, I was in a crypto fund and people thought I owned the wallet because it's called Wu-Tang Clan. Do you listen to Wu-Tang Clan? I have, yes. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I feel like that's another indicator. Really? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have named it Wu-Tang Clan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I had to educate myself on what Wu-Tang Clan was. Um, so, okay. yeah.
uh i think that that's that's pretty interesting now considering the crypto stuff it's kind of like next to slash adjacent to the second thing which is the illegal lottery allegations now i know a lot about this illegal lottery stuff going all the way back to the phase clan days with phase banks and csgo lotto skin with syndicate t martin see what they have to say about these allegations that mr beast and company has against them for illegal lottery citations let's get into this was yeah. there any compliance any steps taken to prevent this what 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 is your just perspective on that yes um so I don't think we did. I have people looking into it and like trying to pull the footage and, and figure it out. Um, you know, he disproved the two, uh, which <laughs> I mean, those were crazy. I, I'm trying to, I have, I don't want to just like speculate. I have a team looking into it. I don't think we did though, but regardless, just to be truthful, if people want a refund or think for whatever reason, like we did something wrong, like I'll send you a, a link that you can just put in the description where they can get a refund. Maybe just throw it on the screen here. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the moment, that's all I really have to say. Maybe I could do a follow up in the future. I'm trying to, you know, dig up all the f uh, footage from that live stream. This is, yeah. this is like many years ago. Like, this isn't like something I did three months ago. Yeah. COVID. His response is very similar to what phase rain and phase banks things were like, listen, I don't think we knew what we were doing. We we're just kids, all this other kind of stuff. I don't think what we did was wrong. And then they realized what they did was wrong and they've apologized for it. numerous. Mr. Beast on the other hand is pretty much already apologizing for it, even though he thinks they didn't do anything wrong. Uh, but just for the people who think they did do something wrong, there is a re refund link. What person does that though, right? To save face, but they already lost millions and millions of dollars. We saw that at the beginning of the video. He already confirmed that they lost millions of dollars from going in, which is why they're suing Dogpack 404 in the first place. Uh, and then really the last one here, the rampant use of CGI. This wasn't really an important thing. It was something that Dogpack 404 kept bringing up. We faked videos, they faked thumbnails, they did this, that, we didn't actually drop a bus into a pit. And it's very, very weird. Like the thing with the, uh, they go over the um, the Squid Games set and Mr. B spent so much money on Squid Games and then he made a funny tweet about it. He goes, hey, turns out Netflix actually used a bunch of CGI for these sets. I actually built these sets. Whoa, the most expensive YouTube video in the world. I believe it still has a world record, by the way. If it does not, I'm 100% mistaken. I apologize. But here's what he has to say about the CGI use in the videos. It's so weird. So, why do you choose to use it? Uh, good question. And yes, I do think rampant use of CGI can undermine it. And I try to do my best to be transparent. I, did you ever see So Crispy's video where they showed the behind the scenes of our Squid Game video? I did, yes. Yeah, so we've done that. We've done lots of BTS videos on them and we've done other BTS videos. So um, I try to show it uh, transparently, but <sighs> let me think about it. I mean, honestly, the truth is like, can you, obviously there are channels like Corridor Digital and stuff yeah. like that, but can you really think of any like, it, you know, entertainment channels like mine that really do this, like even have the budgets to kind of do this kind of stuff. It's, it's, uh, it's something I've always thought a lot about because like we're really pushing boundaries and like I, I want to like keep leveling things up and I think that's a cool way to do it. But it's not like there's some like playbook on how to like incorporate it, right? Because no one else really does it. Mm -hmm. Like something I was thinking about is like, um, like also we rarely use it. Like, I mean, maybe like half a percent, 0.1% of my shots, um, you know, um, like if we have like a, a, a background that like doesn't look too cool like it's just like black but it, it looks a little off we'll just like darken it out in post like that's like majority of what we do or sometimes we'll extend a set um but i was thinking like when we do because i i bro, we pour millions of dollars into these videos we build massive sets like yeah. we we go through so much links to make these huge videos and the last thing i want is people to be like questioning whether or not things are cgi i mean like the sets we build are fucking crazy man like it's it's yeah, wild. Noticed, like you, yeah. yeah, you should come see the like behind the scenes of it. I mean, sometimes we we spend a hundred days just literally building one room for one shot of one video. That's insane. Um, so yeah, I was thinking like maybe just potentially I don't know. This is the first time I'm saying it publicly. Like time stamping in the description when we do. That's uh, interesting. Yeah, or like having some like gimmicky thing where like whatever we do, we like put like a little beast logo on it. So it's like a mm -hmm. thing that if people wanted to identify, they could. I mean, I I. I'm down to figure something out. I mean, we just don't really use it that much. It's just like a thing few and far between. But what I really don't want is people to not be able to trust my videos just because occasionally I want to make a wall blacker or mm -hmm. like I want to extend a set a little bit just to make it look cooler and like like you feel in tune with it. Because what we do on its own. So he basically says they don't use CGI that much. And to that I say, who cares, right? Marvel can get away selling cinema blockbuster hits 
with the Avengers and use a ton of CGI. No one complains about it. Mr. Beast wants to use it for a YouTube video and it's a big problem. I don't see how that's a big issue. A YouTube video and a Marvel blockbuster. I'd argue the Marvel blockbuster with practical effects would be a lot more cooler uh, and genuine than a YouTube video, right? Like I'd really want to see somebody be the Hulk. I really want to see somebody lift another human up, throw him over their head, throw a car over their head or something like that. Crazy. Of course they're going to use CGI for that. But I'd argue that one is a little bit more important than the other because one could be uploaded every single day of the week with a brand new video, cut, com or not. The other one is probably once every three years type shit. You know what I mean? Guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Is this cap, whack, great, late? Let me know in the comment section below. Oh my God, I got bars today. Guys, I love you. Be good, be good, be good. Be good. Be subscribe if you're brand new. Did Mr. Beast beat the allegations? Why or why not? If you can hear that crumbling in the background, I'm sorry, that's my dog. I just got a puppy. I would pick him up for the sign off, but he's already sleeping now. See you all later. <laughs> I'm out of here.